Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Good day, dearly beloved. Calvary greetings to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We thank God for bringing us to another beautiful day. A day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. So, we'll be having our daily devotional this morning. The daily fountain, the daily guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Today, January, Saturday, January 27th, 2024. And the topic, the focus is the changing power of the gospel. John chapter 4 verses 27 to 38. We're trusting God to speak to us as we go through his word. But first, let's pray together. Father, we appreciate you. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your love and your mercy. Thank you for bringing us to another bright, full, successful, beautiful day in your presence. We appreciate you for preservation. Thank you for waking us to this day. We give you thanks. Be glorified in Jesus' name. Father, as we want to study your word, we ask that you speak to us. Holy Spirit, have your way. Your word that is able to transform, we ask that it shall illuminate our lives. And we shall hear you speak in the name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Redeemer, for we have prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. So, if you are a family, please call your members together. Grab your Bible and let's hear God speak to us. Today, Jan January 27th, Saturday 2024, we'll be looking at the topic, The Changing Power of the Gospel. And our text is taken from the book of John, chapter 4, verses uh, 27 to 38. The book of John, chapter 4, verses 27, all through to 38. I'll be reading from here, the New King James Version. And at this point, his disciples came, and they marveled that he talked with a woman. Yet no one said, What do you seek? Or why are you talking with her? The woman then left her water pot, went her way into the city, and said to the men, Come, see a man who told me all things that I ever did. Could this be the Christ? Then they went out of the city and came to him. In the meantime, his disciples urged him, saying, Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat of which you do not know. Therefore, the disciples said to one another, Has anyone brought him anything to eat? Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Do you not say, there are still four months, and then comes the harvest? Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look at the fields, for they are already white for harvest. And he who reaps receives wages, and gathers fruits for eternal life, that both he who sows and he who reaps may rejoice together. For in this the saying is true. One sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you have not labored. Others have labored and you have entered into their labors. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Uh, this is the story of the Samaritan woman, which I believe we all know. She had the word from the Lord Jesus Christ. And she left. And the Bible says she left her water pot and went into the city. That's a word that transformed her at that time. Something happened. Something has happened to her. Something has shifted. She went straight to the city. She didn't just keep the encounter with herself. She didn't keep it to herself. But she went to the city, left her water pot there, went to the city and brought in more people, more people to hear the gospel, the changing power of the gospel. So let's go read the commentary. It said, Jesus was hungry, but he had spiritual passions that needed to be fulfilled. He was hungry, but he had passions. 
he had uh, he had he, he there, there was something for him to achieve on earth though he was hungry but he didn't eat you see where we read the disciples were talking to him that he should eat and they were wondering has anybody brought him food his greatest desire was to do the will of the father to please him that should be the greatest desire of every child of God to do the will of the father to please God we should have that passion that desire for God in his conversation with the Samaritan woman he built a spiritual bridge to her confronting her sin and finally revealing to her that he was the Messiah that woman left her water pot and went and called people to come see Jesus her mundane task of fetching water was not as important anymore her priorities interests and desires changed this is what is expected of us as Christians. What is our priority in this time that we are in the world today? What is our desire as a child of God? Why are you in church? Why are you a Christian? What is your priority? She came to the well to draw water and left the well without water. The effects Jesus had on this woman spread to others and they too sought him. Thus, for the sake of the gospel, Cultural barriers were broken. The gospel is received and believed. It quenches thirsts and satisfies hunger. We we'll refer to verses 31 to 34. I'll read it again. In the meantime, his disciples urged him, saying, Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat of which you do not know. Therefore, the disciples said to one another, Has anyone brought him anything to eat? Jesus said to them, my food is the do the will of him who sent me that's with emphasis my food is to do the will of him who sent me and not to just do it but finish his work to do the work and to finish his work that is the desire that is what is expected of every child of god where to do the will of God, do the de our desire should be to do the will of God. Our desire is to spread the gospel, the changing power of the gospel. A couple of us, many of us, have experienced and encountered God in diverse ways. We've experienced deliverances. We've experienced healings. We experience all kinds of blessings from God, but we, we are not supposed to just keep it to ourselves. We're supposed to spread the gospel. Like this woman by the well, she abandoned her water pot. She left because she has encountered something, something that has changed her life, something has shifted. And she felt, oh, wow, this is a wonderful thing. Let me not keep it to myself. She left her water pot and went straight into the village to tell people, please come come and see and a lot of people i believe will have been touched a lot of lives will have been saved the gospel has been changing the world for over two thousand years have you allowed the gospel of christ to transform you have we as christians allowed the gospel of christ to transform us remember it still can and we are its voices every one of us can do our part so it's not for the priest alone it's not for the priest's wife alone we are called by god every child of god is called to spread the gospel we should do our part in your office in our businesses and anywhere we find ourselves today uh, let us determine to be a light the Bible says that a city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. He said, we are cities that are set on a hill. Everybody is looking at us. Everybody is looking at that Christian, that sister, that brother. How are we really preaching the gospel with our attitudes, with our way of life? Are we only Christians on Sunday mornings? Are we only Christians when it's convenient for us? Are we only Christians when we want to do trade and battle with God? We want God to do certain things for us. We're in need of certain things. That's when we become Christians. Or are we truly children of God? Is every one of us doing our part? And what is our role to preach the gospel? 
What is our role to tell others about Christ? What is our role? What, what is what God has done for us? If God has done anything for you as a child of God, that is the news you should spread. Come and see. Come and see somebody that told me about my life. It's as simple as that. Come and see. Once I was blind, now I can see. Once I was sick, now he healed me. Once I, I was in poverty, he brought me up. Once I had challenges, he made a way for me. That is the gospel. And that is what we should joyfully, joyfully as Christians, we should be ready to preach it. Don't ever be tired. Don't be tired. Don't be discouraged. Because sometimes the responses we get may not be favorable, may not be encouraging. But what are we doing? We should rather rejoice that we have an opportunity to speak the gospel. We have an opportunity to help transform somebody's life. We have an opportunity to invite someone for Bible study. If you, if you are the shy type, if you are an introvert and you don't even know where to start, no problem. But you can as well invite somebody. Let's worship together. Come for Bible study. Come from your, for your church activities. You can invite someone to church on Sunday and follow them up. You can do that. That's preaching the gospel and that's changing the world for Christ. The, the, the commentary here says that remember we are his voices. We are God's voices. He speaks through us. And here he also gives us the boldness to speak. To speak politely and to let the world know let the next person to you let somebody know about jesus christ don't spend 24 hours without something in you speaking about god either could be your attitude it could be even you know simple discussions in your place of work you know maybe during your break time maybe the over lunch in your office probably even your children at home who comes to us as parents are we preaching the gospel to them? Are they also shining the light in their schools if they're of age? Are we are we do are they are they are they born again? Are they aware of the work of salvation? He says we remember that we can evangelize and it affects others around us. The gospel changes our passion and purpose. It changes us. When you encounter God, you can't remain the same. You cannot, something will shift, something will change in you. The when God's word is applies, it satisfies people's hunger and thirst. Is that your experience? Do you apply the word of God on every situation, in every circumstances? So when God's word is applied, it satisfies people's hunger and thirst. Is that your experience? The Bible says the word which I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. Say the word that I speak shall not return unto me void. So that's every scripture, every word from God. The Bible says it will not return to God void, but it shall accomplish that which it is meant for. It shall prosper in it. That is the word of God. And that it satisfies hunger, it satisfies thirst. Is that our experience? Do we experience the changing, have we experienced the changing power of the gospel? The changing power of the word of God that is able to transform, is able to change us. Now, how can you experience the changing power of the word of God if you don't study the word of God? The Bible says that study to show yourself approved. A worker that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Do you commit time to study the word of God? Do you commit time? to meditate on scriptures? Do you commit your time to sit, to bring your family together daily, daily to, to, to study the word of God? The word of God is able to change, is able to transform, is able to give victory. The word of God is able to lift you up. The word of God is powerful to heal. Do you study the word of God? Do you really create time? Let's be encouraged. Everywhere where I know we are busy with one, uh, with, with our, in our career, in our businesses, and some people could, maybe 24 hours may not even be enough for them personally to study. But in your busy schedule, please create time to study the Word of God. Please create time. Open your Bibles personally. I'm not talking about the family altar, I'm talking about as an individual now. As an individual, create time. As a mother, as a father, as a sister, a child of God.
please create time to study the word of God. It's able to build you up. It's able to transform. It's able to help. It's able to make a way in any circumstance as an individual. Now, as a family, build that family altar. Fathers, mothers, uncles, build that family altar. Everybody under your roof. Create a convenient time and come together and study the word of God. Pray together. It's able to transform. The children under you are listening. Are listening. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. They are hearing the word of God no matter how little, how small they are. They are hearing, they are listening. And as they are listening, something is happening in them. Something is happening in their destiny. They are being transformed. They are being, they, to be, are being transformed to conform to the world. So please, I want to encourage us in this devotional today. The power of the gospel is able, the word of God is able to transform. Let us create time, create an atmosphere. Always, always. Not, don't be tired. Create an atmosphere. It's, if, it's, if the convenient time is in the morning as a family, please go ahead, do it daily every morning. If it's in the evening as a family, please do it in the evening. The God of the morning is still the God of the night. So whichever time is convenient for you, you bring the whole of your home together and study the word of God. Study the Bible and the Lord will help us in Jesus name. And uh, I want to add by reading the book of Acts chapter 20 verse 32. The book of Acts chapter 20 verse 32. It says, so now brethren, I commend you to God to, and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among those that are sanctified. Commending us to the word of God is able to build you up. Commending us to the word of God that is able to transform. Commending us to the word of God that has the solution to every challenge in life. Whatever it is we're going through, whatever we are confronted with, the solution is in the word of God. How do you get it? You have to dig into it. How do you get it? You have to study and, you know, and meditate on it. God helping us in Jesus' name. And as you have encountered God, be encouraged to also bring others. Be encouraged to save a soul. Be encouraged to save a life. Be encouraged to help build somebody. Let people have testimonies concerning you as a, as a Christian that they were once like this, but they are work with you or they are, they, they are, they are, their relationship with you has helped build them up in Christ. Let somebody be able to give a testimony about you that, oh, when I was close to that sister, that was when I was able to study the word. When I became close to that sister or that brother, that was when I understood, I understood the power that is in the world. Whoa, when I was close to that sister, when I became friends with that brother, that was when I was, ab I, I, I was able to be bold and to, to preach the gospel. That was when I was able to speak the word to someone else. Let your own life too, let it transform somebody. It could be by your words. It could be by your actions. It, let, bring up somebody. Bring up, let's all, if all of us together, for example, in the Anglican communion, if in total, we go out in totality with all our strength, we preach the gospel at every opportunity, at every instance, we say something about the Lord Jesus Christ to someone, we rescue a perishing sister, we rescue a perishing brother, we bring somebody close to God. If we all do it together and can imagine how much light will be Nigeria as of today in the world. And then you now begin to imagine if all the Christians around the world, if we take this very seriously, if we understand the changing power of the, of the gospel, we actually practice it. We preach the gospel. We make it a priority as a child of God. You can imagine if all the Christians in Nigeria, if we, if we take on to this and we preach the gospel, you can imagine the changing effect it will have in our nation and in, in, in Nigeria, all around the country. And if all the Christians in the world come together, if we are conscious and we make it a priority to preach the gospel, 
You can imagine how the world will be by now. Please let us, this is to encourage us. We have been encouraged today. Thank God it's Saturday, 27th January. Please say the love of God to somebody. Do something today. Don't let today end without someone getting to know God better through you. Without someone getting to know the power of salvation through you. And God will help us in Jesus' name. This is to encourage us. Let your light so shine. Let your light shine. Let everybody see the Lord Jesus Christ in you. Let us pray. Our prayer says, thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving us your word to change us. And now just take a couple of minutes, a couple of seconds now. Just talk to God. You desire to be his mouthpiece. You desire to, to change. You may not have the capacity to change the world, but you can change the next household. You can change the next system to you. Ask God to give you the grace. Ask God for grace. Grace to make this gospel your priority. To preach it, to live it, and teach it. Pray that God will give you the grace. Quietly in your heart, ask God for grace. Grace to preach the gospel. To make it of utmost importance and priority in our life. And to live it. Grace to live as a child of God. Father, we appreciate you. We thank you for another time in your presence. Thank you for your message. Thank you for your word. Father, Lord God, we come before you and we ask for everyone under my voice to this time that you grant us grace. Grace, O oh God, to study your word. And as we study, Father, let heavens over us be open. Lord, and let the light in your word illuminate our lives. In the name of Jesus, grant us understanding of your word, O oh God. And as we teach your word, we preach the gospel. Father, we pray that through us, O oh God, you will manifest your power and life shall be transformed in Jesus' name. And the grace to constantly teach, preach the gospel, the power that is inherent therein, to grace to be a light, to shine our light. Father, grant unto us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Redeemer. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. God bless you, and please be determined to study the word and live it. Live the gospel. God bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of the Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. Also, Subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNNTV. Visit our website www.acnntv.com.